Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting a squirrel as requested by Pam Creton. I've drawn these before but I've never exactly painted them so I'll be painting this in a loose way and I hope this is somewhat useful for you guys. As I always say, I'm not the best with animal paintings. So before I approach these types of paintings, I always like to look around at Pinterest just to understand the anatomy a bit more and also pick a pose that I want to work with. I want a fairly normal pose from the side so I don't have to deal with weird foreshortening and Pam also requested for the squirrel to be holding an acorn so I'm going to look for one where the squirrel have their hands together so I can slide an acorn in when I paint it and this is the picture that I'm going to base the pose on. Since I'm drawing this out with you, I'll leave the reference on the bottom right. I only use the reference for the drawing itself. so. For the painting I took it off but hopefully this is useful for you. I'm looking at the overall shape for this. I'm not going to be overly too accurate since I'll be doing a loose painting and instead of the usual shapes that I break down the drawing with when it comes to animal paintings, I'm going to take a different approach. This is a different technique instead of simplifying those shapes and separate them into smaller ones, I'm going to create flat angled planes of the main outline of the subject. The reason being when I'm unfamiliar with the organic shapes of the body, I look at the flat planes in straight lines and then I just try to smooth it out together later on. I think this is a more approachable way when the shape is a bit more abstract or you're unfamiliar with something. So for instance, if you want to paint a version where the body is foreshortened and the simplified shapes are harder to break down, you can use this approach and treat the whole body as a huge shape or a huge abstract shape and focus on the outlines using different angled lines and try to break it down that way without focusing too much on the three-dimensional form. I just look at it in 2D because if you were to mix the two it can be a bit confusing and less accurate because sometimes our brains can try adjusting to it being a three-dimensional form. That way sometimes we miss valuable information. A similar practice that I did with this type of technique is using your reference picture upside down. So you are no longer bound to the subject itself, but the simplified shapes or lines. This is really helpful to bring your drawings to life and I find that sometimes it's even a bit more accurate because my brain isn't trying to process it in a different way, especially when I'm not experienced enough with a certain subject. I know this sounds a bit weird, but hopefully it makes sense to some of you. It's always better to just give this a go and dive in to understand the concept of this type of learning, but hopefully this makes sense. For the background, I'm just going to use a wet on wet technique for something that's a bit more abstract, but if you're interested in adding leaves or any decorative elements, you can also do that. I just added the branch at the bottom for the squirrel to stand on, and you can also change this up if you have any other ideas. I think I'm okay with the outline, so I'm going to move on to painting, but before that I'm going to go over the colors that I used for this painting. So these are the colors. I used sepia, burnt sienna, vermilion, permanent yellow deep, sap green, but after painting this I actually prefer terra verde, so you can change it up if you want to. Cobalt blue, compost blue, and this last one is optional, but I also used Quin Rose or you can also use Quin Red to add a bit more redness because the vermilion is more on the orangey side. So now I'm just going to go straight into painting the background. I'm going to be using a wet on wet effect so I'm just wetting the background with clean water so the surface is nice and wet for the paint to travel. It's okay to not be overly neat with this because it is going to be a loose painting and if you get a bit of water inside of the outline, it's also okay because we're only using a thin consistency. The colors that I'm going to start with is 
different green tones. So I used a mixture of the compost blue with the sap green and I'm also making a warmer tone with the burnt sienna. I'm going to alternate these colors so I can create a blurry background and I'm going to try to depict blurry leaves and also small branches. I also mixed in some of the permanent yellow deep and a little bit of burnt sienna to add those lines for branches but because this is wet on wet everything's just going to blur together. You can even add some blue so it looks like some of the light from the sky is peeking through the leaves in the background. You can create a full background but I'm just going to leave this here and have white all around it so it looks a bit more loose. And before I start painting the squirrel, I'm going to clean my palette first. The reason being is because I've mostly used the space and also I use some blues and greens which is the opposite of the color of the squirrel which I want to be a bit more on the orangey side. And you guys know that opposite colors create something that's a bit muddy or something similar to brown. And I want the orange of the squirrel to be a bit more vibrant, which is why I want my colors to be as clean as possible. And I just activated a bunch of colors that I'm going to be using. I want different tones of browns and oranges. So on my palette, I have my permanent yellow deep. I have vermilion, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, and also sepia. For the paint application, I wet the tail of my scroll and my brush was a bit dirty so it had a little bit of brown tint but that's okay because I want the tail to be more on the muted brown side compared to the body which I'm going to paint with the orange. So I started with sepia near the body and then built up the colors with a lighter brown which is the burnt sienna and I used a thinner consistency as I get towards the side so the colors look like it's a bit more loose and it's just traveling by itself. Near the body I just made it a little bit darker so it looks like it has a part that's a bit in shadow and as I get towards the outside I tried to loosen and feather the transition so it becomes softer and at the tip I also made it a bit lighter but this is optional. I'm going to approach painting the body the same way and that's to start with the wet on wet so I'm just going to wet the area that I'm going to paint first. I'm going to start with the lightest color first and I use a mixture of permanent yellow deep with a little bit of vermilion to create a light orange color and I'm just placing it at the top part. Then I'm going to continue on while the surface is still wet with an orangey brown color which is a mixture of burnt sienna and vermilion. Even though we're using a wet on wet technique and most of the paint will be a little bit blurry at this point, I'm still following the curvature of the body. So this will help enhance the form and create more of a 3D shape instead of something that is flat. I also built up the brown by mixing some of the burnt sienna with sepia and you can change up the consistency depending on where you want the darker shadows to be. Moving on to the face, the reason why I kept this dry compared to the rest of the body is because I actually want a bit more control since I am painting at a very small scale. So you'll see me using the very tip of my brush so I get the features right. At the top of the head, I want the color to be a bit muted than the rest of the body which is why I used a mixture of the burnt sienna with the sepia. So now that I've got most of the color down for majority of the body of the squirrel, I'm going to move on to the second layer by adding a slightly darker color once the surface is dry. For this, I'm using the tip of my brush so I can get finer lines to create that furry texture. I'm still following the curvature of the body though and this is something that I'm going to follow through throughout the whole painting to enhance the form. When the edges of some of the details you've painted looks a bit too sharp for your liking, you can always use a wet brush to soften the edges a bit and blend it with the base color. 
Near the face, the color is a bit softer and it's quite light actually. So instead of using a mixture from my palette, I just used a clean damp brush to take some of the color from the face and just blend it in towards that white area to create a soft color. I'm going to repeat this for the belly since the belly is a nice soft creamy color. So I just took some of the color from the arm and just extended downwards. I also painted the arm that is hidden behind and I made a mistake of pulling it a bit too much. So I took off some of the color using tissue when the surface is still wet and then fill it in with a darker color to create a little bit of shadow. For the inside of the ear, I used a mixture of vermilion and burnt sienna because I want the inside to be a bit more on the reddish pinkish side. And this is where you can actually add quin rose or quin red into the mixture to make it a bit more on the pink side. Because I only used vermilion, it turned out just looking more like a reddish brown. As for the side of the ears, I used a dry brush technique to create the wispy brush strokes by taking off excess moisture on my brush and letting the bristles spread out slightly to create the really soft furry part of the ear. And I'm also going to apply this to some of the fur on the body for added texture. You can start to see that the body is now taking a bit of the three-dimensional form but some parts are also drying off completely and it looks a bit more faded. So where those areas are less saturated, I just add a glaze of the base color itself again to increase the saturation but you can adjust this according to the state of your own painting. Next I'm going to paint the eyes and you'll notice that I didn't have any ivory black. That's because you can mix a bit of the cobalt blue with sepia in a very thick consistency with added vermilion to create something close to a black. But if that's a bit too difficult, you can also use just pure black or ivory black if you would like to. Then I'm just going to use the same black for the nails of the squirrel. I know that it's not supposed to be black, but I'm going to add some white gouache later on. So you can see a little bit of visible black and also white with the acorn being the background. You can use any brown mixture for the acorn if you would like to. I also decided to add a little bit of green to give a bit more interest to the color depending on how young or mature the acorn itself is. And I kept the style loose to go with the rest of the painting but you can also add a bit more detail if you would like to. I just made sure that the top cap and the bottom is separate so I made sure that the shadow under the cap is very visible so the form is clear. To define some of the fingers, I made sure to add the darker browns in between so the lighter color will pop up. And I forgot to paint the bottom background so this is where I'm just going to paint it in really quickly before I tackle the branch that the squirrel is standing on. You may not see it, but I've already wet the part of the branch completely. Then I used a thin mixture of burnt sienna with a black mixture that I had on my palette to just mute the burnt sienna slightly and just color it as the base color. And then I used a higher ratio of the black mixture with the burnt sienna to add some shadow and add a bit of form to the branch. And then I'm just going to leave this to dry before adding on the next layer for the texture. This is probably one of my favorite parts. So first I'm going to create a dark brown mixture by adding sepia, burnt sienna, and vermilion together. And I'm using the side of my brush to create random brush strokes. As long as you follow the grain of the bark, it should look fine. And I'm also going to alternate the colors slightly. Just make sure when you're painting this to not forget to add the darker colors at the bottom so you don't lose the form of the tree branch. <laughs> 
Next I want to add some leaves for the composition to add a little bit more color. So I used a mixture of sap green, cobalt blue with vermilion and also burnt sienna. It is a little bit of a complex mixture but this is why I also mentioned at the beginning that you're probably better off with just terra verde because it's a bit more on the mute side compared to the sap green which I find is a bit more vibrant but you can adjust this to any green that you're used to. I also decided to add a lighter warm green color by adding in permanent yellow deep into the mixture so you can adjust the color to suit your own painting and the tone of your composition. I'm also going to add a bit of the green on the branch. I think that it gives it so much more character by making it look like it has moss growing even though I'm not really painting any texture. I'm just painting it and glazing it lightly on some parts of the branch. So I've made a mistake here and I've made the squirrel look like it's floating on top of the branch instead of it sitting on it so I'm just going to extend the branch slightly so now the squirrel is sitting at this point I think once everything is drying off again I'm just going to add another layer to enhance the color and add a bit more saturation to the painting The leaves are quite dry by now so I'm going to add some berries. I think this pop of color makes the composition so much better. You can also create different types of berries if you would like to but I'm just going to keep mine simple and create red berries using vermilion and I also added some sepia to darken the red slightly for the layer on top. So as the finishing touches, I'm going to add white gouache first to add highlights for the eyes, berries, and also the nails like I mentioned before. Finally, I'm going to finish off with splatters. I tend to use whatever I have left on my palette for this so I can decrease the amount of paint that I waste. And for the first one, I decided to take off the excess paint so the splatter is very subtle. Whereas for the second round, I left it darker and I find that this variation works nicely together. So that's it for the painting. This is my interpretation of the squirrel in a loose and simplified way. Like usual, all of the tools and my social media links will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!